I can tell who are the committed. It's Labor Day weekend here in the United States, and folks are still on. I was thinking about taking the day off, but I said, nah, let's get online. So anyway, welcome to Sales After Dark, where money never sleeps. Uh, if you don't know the format of the show, here's how it goes. Uh, I'm going to say hi to my friends, my tribe, for about five minutes. So if you're watching this on the replay, hit the fast forward button. Then I'll do about 15 minutes of content. And then I'll take questions from you guys, harassment, whatever it may be. And then we'll end it right there. So let's see who is on the actual line. Let's see who, let's see who made it up first here. We got Brian Gator, Las Vegas in the house. Vegas here wishing you all the happiest, safe Labor Day weekend. We're staying in. We're not going anywhere. Tony. Welcome back, man. Haven't seen you in a while, man. Always glad to have you back. Love it, man. I know you're up early, brother. I know, and I appreciate that. Inkle, John, the value merchant. You're truly from Philippines. I know where you're from, man, but thank you for telling me again. Milwaukee's always in the house, man. Uh, let me see. We got intro is magnet. Yeah, I like that intro music. Pete, what's happening? Cleveland, Ohio, in the house. Uh, let me see. We got... Luigi Giovanetti, man. And I believe you joined the Sales Velocity Academy. Way to go. Bam. And if you haven't joined the Sales Velocity Academy, why not? And don't remember, forget, subscribe, hit that little bell button so you get the notification when I go live. So anyway, we also have my man, Chris Stone. I'm going to do some cool stuff with Chris Stone. Hold on. Got a little glitch in the matrix here, man. And so Chris Stone, man, uh, we just did a show with a guy named Dan... Uh, Jordan, and so I'm going to show you a video clip, not to pull that up, but what I want to do is really highlight some of the things that are going on, but anyway, I'll get back to that in just a bit, so let me see, we got much love here, all right, I appreciate that, love from India, Prashant Maiza, did I get it right, Maiza or Maiza, one of the two, man, so let's see, uh, what else is going, greetings from Finland, man, what time is it in Finland? Finland, Juka, always glad you're here, man. Jonathan, Kim Burrow, dude, look at that, look at that avatar on this guy. Look at the avatar on this guy. I'm hosting LinkedIn Virtual Networking Gala 2020. Would you like to attend, man? Maybe, maybe. Anyway, glad you're on board. Jonathan, Kim Burrow, man, that's a lot of stars. Thank you, man. Uh, I'm a, I'm a virgin here, Victor. First time, Kevin. Welcome. Come on in. It won't be that rough. Anyway, so good morning from India. Tarun, man. Thank you for being here, man. And then we got embracing the opportunity to proceed. Good nods. Kenry, Kenry, Kenry. I'm glad you're here, man. So, uh, Pete, thank you again for the sales velocity support. Kimbro says, let's connect. I think we just did that, man. We just did that. Prashant, good vibes, man. Thank you, brother. Sending them right back to you with a lot of love, man. 4 a.m. in Finland. Juka, you're awesome, man. You are awesome. Uh, LinkedIn Live, Facebook, not. Uh, fake, LinkedIn is live, Facebook, not. Yeah, man, I should be on Facebook. I I hope. It should be either both on my personal and my fan page. Let me know if that's not happening. Shoot that says, Victor, do you remember? Do you remember? Remember Order Through and Fire? Anyway, uh, do you remember you have great videos uploaded four years back? I still watch them. They are great as well. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. I like that. We'll touch on that. I like to think I put up good content, man. So thank you. We have Edwina from Sydney, Australia, man. And that's an awesome avatar. There he is, cast ahead. Chris Long again. Uh, who's this? Les Flux LTD. This is Diddy First. All right, man. I don't know what that means, but I'm glad you're here, man. All right. Good morning. Camus Swat, man. There he is. The master of disaster from Trinidad, Tobago himself. The coolest sales dude from that part of the world, Jared Best Mitchell. I was on his podcast not too long ago, man. Thank you for joining, man. Also, uh, we have, who's this? We got, I'm trying to catch up, man. You guys are going fast. Jenny, how you doing, Jenny? Glad you're here. Rod Vidre, he's committed, man. Rod's always the guy. If you don't know who he is, he's the guy that always harasses me with questions. But I still love him. Anyway, so we got Mark Saunders, Tucson, Arizona. Dude, it was like 111 there. Am I right, Mark? What was your temperature today in Tucson, Arizona, man? Start cooking those eggs outside, man. Jenny from Kentucky, Bluegrass State. Love it. Uh, Victor videos, are, all Victor videos are good. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate that, man. And then we have Ramon Betances. Victor Antonio, hermano mio. That's right. What's up, brother? All is good. Uh, we're going to do some good stuff. We got, let me see, got Cristo. Got a couple more that I'm going to jump in. You're live on Facebook, man. All the streams, all the time. Bring the fire, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. 
I love Spanish people that says, Mi nombre es Carlos Alberto Santos de Jabón. De Hanon. Hanon. I got it, man. Saludo desde Panama, man. Years ago, I went to Panama like three or four times. Uh, there's a family there named La Familia Betsac. The company's called Multicom. I sold one of my largest systems in Panama and love Panama. People, beautiful. I got to see the Panama Canal too, which is very cool, man. Uh, nope on Facebook. Okay, uh, so you get together with Chris and you guys let me know what's what. All right, Victor, good to hear you again, man. Wagas, man, glad you're here, man. Uh, drop the fire, Victor. We're going to do something here. So anyway, um, what I wanted to do is I was on a show by, um, I'm going to try to bring it up here because I, I didn't pull it up. Uh, let me see if I can do something here. Just bear with me, guys. I'm gonna, I got to bring down a file real quick in the background. But I want to show you this quick clip. Um, I did a show with a guy named Dan Jordan. And so what I want to do is pull down a quick file. Uh, I thought I had it, but I have it here. And it might not work if I have it here and I pull it up. So I'll, I'll ask for your indulgence, man, if you could just bear with me as I pull this file up. And I was on uh, Dan Jordan, also known as The Deej, The Sales Energizer, invited me on his, on his show with uh, and Chris uh, Long as the producer. And so one of the things we talked about, uh, and I'll see if I can pull it up. God darn it. I thought I had it like right here. But give me a second. Let me see if this will work. Let me see if I can play with this technology. I got five pieces running. And so in there we talked about a lot of things. And hey, Chris, let me know when we're actually going to pull that one up, man. Let me know when we're going to pull that video up, uh, when you guys are actually going to do it. Uh, so, so, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the full board. And hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. If you're not, you let me know if you can't hear it, okay? So let me pull up the board. Let me see if my technology works. Here it goes. You guys can't hear the audio, can you? You're not going to hear the audio. All right. We're going to let that one go. But I look good on that show. But anyway, that's the video I want to pull up. So I'm having technical difficulties. But let me talk to you what I talked about on that show. And it's, by the way, it's a, we did about, I think, an hour. And it was fantastic, man. So feels weird to do this while I'm back there doing this also. It just feels weird. But what, we, what I realized was that in, that in that show, we talked about a lot of things. I'm not going to talk about this yet. Hold on a second. I'm, hold on. Bear with me. Bear with me. I got a lot of programs running in the background. And here we go. And so what I wanted to talk to you about, just to you, hold on a second. Bam. So on the show with Dan, Jordan, we talked about, you know, how is it that I pivoted from, you know, you know, into where I'm at today with the digital part. And I was telling the story on the show. And again, Chris will let me know when we're going to actually produce the show uh, and when it's going to go live. And so what one of the things we talked about is how do you, you know, pivot when everything goes to hell in the handbasket. So I've told the story before, but this time I'm going to tell you what the results have been since the pandemic hit and a five-step process that may help you build your business. So if you're a personal business owner, a consultant, an entrepreneur, you're going to love this, okay? And so the quick story is the following. So I was in Puerto Rico on the 13th. And on the 13th, what I found out was that, you know, when I got back from Puerto Rico, I found out that we had a shutdown, right? We all knew about the pandemic. We had a shutdown. And so I remember thinking, uh, this, is, this is bad. I remember telling my wife, you know, nuclear winter, all business is going to be gone. I, I knew it. And sure enough, within a couple of weeks, all my cancellations started coming in. Now, for those of you who don't know, 80, maybe 90 percent of my business was actually 80, 90 percent of my business was actually, you know, speaking in public. So if you see me speak in public, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think I have a picture somewhere here of me speaking in public. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's what. It, and so all of that's gone. So if all of that's gone, then the, the question then becomes, what do you do? What do you do when all your business is gone? And that's when I immediately said, let me figure out how to pivot. And so in this pivot process, what I want to walk you through is what I've gone through in the last, I don't know, two, three months. So the pandemic for us, the shutdown was March 20th, right? And I went live with my live stream on, I think it was May 4th. I think it's my first live stream if you look at it. So about a little over a month for me to actually pivot. And so what I want to do is share with you. Not only what I did, walk you through the five steps of what I did during this pandemic pivot, but also as I walk you through the steps, I'm going to share with you some of the things that have been happening in the background that you never see that are like really cool things, right? Because I want to, if, if right now you're struggling, you're trying to get your business going, you know, your, your, some of your revenue stream is going, and we don't know how fast or how slow this is going to take. In other words, is 2021 going to be good for public events? I don't know. Do you? I don't know. 
And I, I'm assuming that it's not. In other words, even if, we, again, by the end of the year, we figure this stuff out, whatever that means, I think people are still going to hesitate going back to business. So what I want to do is lay out for you what, what's happened to me, what shift I made, what I did, what I've been building, and then I'm going to give you some of the results, man. I'm going to show you what's been happening in the background. Really cool stuff. So the first thing, the first thing that happened is I had to come up with, now imagine for a second that all your business is gone. 89% of your business is gone, right? So now I'm asking myself, all right, what do I do? Now everybody's going to go virtual. I kind of figured that part out, but I needed a concept, right? Now I was doing podcasts. I said, okay, I'm doing some sales influence podcasts. So if you haven't heard my podcast, check it out. Sales influence podcast. I was putting out some YouTube videos, but I needed something different. Something that I said was more engagement. So step number one is I basically came up with a new concept, right? And the new concept, as most of you know, is let me get a smaller pen here, was the sales after dark. That's the sales after dark that you're seeing now. So sales after dark was a concept that I said to myself, how is that one going to be different? How is that concept going to be different from everything else? And if you look at all these webinars that are out there, like hit me if you like listen to too many webinars, if you know what I'm talking about. Are you, do you, have you suffered from webinar fatigue yet? Because there's so many, web hit me with the one if you know what I'm talking about. All these different webinars out there are simply just what? Talking heads, talking heads. So one of the things I wanted to do was just to do something different, right? Just figure out what can I do different? And then this concept of sales after dark came up. And truth be told, I got to be honest here, I'm not, and I'm not joking about this. I'm not trying to be funny. I remember years ago, like years ago, and I think the reason I remember this name, uh, I, well, anyway, years ago, I remember hearing the name Playboy After Dark, right? Because we couldn't stay up after dark anyway, you know, and watch cable TV. But I remember I was watching a Hugh Hefner documentary, like, I don't know, four or five months ago. It was actually a very good documentary on, on Netflix. Uh, and came up with the whole, his whole show was called Sales After Dark, I mean, uh, Playboy After Dark. That's where the name actually came from. I wanted to do something that was different. So one, I didn't want to do the webinar Talking Head. Two, I didn't want to do it at a regular time because that's when everybody else does it. And that's when the concept of sales after dark really hit me. So that was kind of the first step. What can I do? A new concept that nobody's thought about and I can drive more traffic. Now, I think in terms of funnels, so if you look at my funnel, my funnel is very simple. I got people coming in from Sales Influence, my podcast. I also come in, have them coming in from YouTube, but these are YouTube videos. And in Sales After Dark, these are the live streams that are coming in. And so what's happening is I'm driving like massive traffic into my, my, my channels, but also a lot of them are going to my sites or my, my Sales Influence podcast. So last month, we I think we did over 100,000 again on just download on the Sales Influence podcast. So all this stuff is building. And keep in mind, like, you know, this is like summer. Well, we're ending summer now. But this is when I usually have low traffic, and I've had some of the highest traffic volume I've had ever on any of my channels. So the first thing I had to do was, what can I do that's different? So my question to you, if you're a business and you're trying to stand out, right? You know, years ago, one of the things I learned years ago in business, and you probably know this, is that when you look at what's happening in the market today, there's something, in, in engineers know something called signal to noise ratio, signal to noise ratio. A signal to noise ratio basically means you got a lot of frequencies, right? There's a lot of frequencies out in the air. Just think of this as just frequencies spaced out. The question is, how do you stand out? This is what's happening in the market. And then as technology has accelerated the last couple of years, more people are jumped into the market over the, yeah, I say over the last five years. So a lot of people are jumping into the market. You got people creating more content, more videos, more podcasts. So the question then becomes, and I'll give you the visual because this is what sales after dark is, is how do you create something that just not doesn't come here, but actually stands above that just a little bit differently? That's a signal to noise ratio. Your signal needs to be higher than the noise for somebody to pay attention, which is one of the reasons why, as I was creating this concept, I said it has to stand out. It has to be a little different. It can't be the sitting talking head. It has to be a different concept, different time of day. And my question to you as I push back to you is what can you do to be different? in your business? What can you do that somebody else isn't doing right now? And that's what you should machinate on, right? In other words, let that marinate in your head. Second thing I did, this was the tough part, and I've talked about this. One of the toughest things about going virtual, doing the full pivot to virtual, and let me just kind of give it a pause here. Even if you think we're going to go back to normal, I, I really want you to delete that from your head. I am telling you now, 
virtual is now part of the process. Whether it's part of the sales process, whether it's part of the marketing process, the prospecting side, doesn't matter. Virtual is now part of the process officially. Even businesses are now telling people you can stay home to the end of the year. I think Google says people can stay home to the end of, ne not end of next year, like March or April. Give me the, some of you probably know what I'm talking about. But keep in mind that now it's acceptable. It's that we have now accepted that it's okay to work from home. Don't believe me? Don't believe this is really happening? Don't believe this is really changing? Try this. Go to Staples or Office Depot and try to buy, try to buy one of these desks that actually just, you know, the risers that you can actually elevate and lower. You can't find them. Hard to find. I can't even find certain chairs anymore. I just went to like, um, uh, what was it? Um, uh, one of the electronic stores. I won't use their name, but I couldn't find cables. This is where out of cables. So everybody's building out their home offices. So this is becoming standard. Everybody's just putting money into their house and they're building out. So one of the things I've learned, and I'm glad I got on it early, is that it's hard to find certain pieces of equipment now, right? And so the second thing I had to do was look at what is my equipment? What equipment do I need to actually produce this new concept? And I've talked about this, and I'm not going to beat this over the head because a lot of you guys have heard me talk about this before, right? Is that I've had, had to redo this whole studio. This studio did not exist back in March. Not in the form it is today. I mean, I just had a little green screen over there, pointing the camera that way. That's all I did. Didn't have the production software. Didn't have the cool things to do stuff like that. Didn't have any of that, right? And so I had to retool everything, and I've already talked about my frustrations doing this. But I've learned that if you can equip yourself correctly, this right here, this set has closed so many deals. Listen to me, man. This set has closed deals. I've had people pop on a Zoom call and see this because I can push this through Zoom. And they're freaking out, like, what the hell's that? Because I'm trying to stand out. Signal to noise ratio, I'm trying to stand above. So I got a lot of guys popping on here, man. So I got Doug Lehman's in the house. Lisa Davis, could this be the same Lisa Davis from my college days? Let me know, man. I'd be great if I can connect with you. Uh, Lehman, pivot mindset and build the skill set. Solomon says, is this live? I think it is, because I'm talking to you right now, Solomon. So anyway, you guys are yes? <laughs> Solomon says, all right, I'm in. Uh, what's this? Spencer says, hi, in the cabinet business, home office build-out is huge. There it is. So I'm not making this up. So everybody's shifting. There's, there is a shift happening. It's, it's happening all around you right now. And so again, if you're not creating a virtual space at home, which I think you really should, I think you're missing out because you're going to need it sooner or later. And I know what you're saying. It depends on the business. I get that. But I'm telling you right now, this, I'm going to say you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. But something that's nice is what people are looking for. So the second thing I did was all equipment, right? So I got the concept, you know, sales after dark, sales after dark, do it at a different time when nobody else is doing their stuff, right? Now, uh, watch what's going to happen. I'm a trendsetter. Watch what's going to happen. Everybody's going to start creating something after dark. There's going to be business after dark, marketing after dark, something else. Watch. They'll come up with something. But right now, I, I kind of own the evening space a little bit. But in your business, what can you do that's different that stands out from a lot of people? And let me see. Chris says, yes, thinking uh, Lisa. All right, Lisa, from our college days, man. We have to connect, Lisa. It'd be great to talk to you. Uh, Chris Stone. Yes, stop thinking back to normal. But we cannot avoid thinking about the content while improving the delivery system. There it is, man. I, I'm great, agree with you. Virtue is the new normal. Embrace it or die. That's a little morbid, but I know what you're saying, man. Uh, let me see. What do you got, Doug? Uh, good to see Chris Stone, Jared Mitchell, good people happening. That's right, man. This is the place to be. Uh, amen, Gator. I'm with you, man. And so that's the easy. So the second part is the equipment. And by the way, let me tell you right now, it's frustrating. Pieces of equipment, trying to connect things together. Uh, you'll go through the process, but you'll get it, right? And maybe I'll do a separate, just a separate live stream just to talk about what pieces of equipment work and don't work. Because trust me, I've spent a lot of money. I can tell you a lot of stuff that doesn't work. Right. And a lot of stuff is uh, what I call consumer electronic products that they work. But the people who know who have a good ear or can see things know that it's really not as good as they say it is. Number three, this was the key part. So if I have a concept, right, great, that's fine. You can have an idea, a concept, sales after dark, got, I'm all equipped right now. But then you have to do something to grab people's attention. And that's when I started using some of the, uh, the imagery. And so when I started using some of the imagery, let me see if I can pull some of it up. You've seen some of my images. And all this was all branding, man. That's all I did, right? All I did was begin to brand this stuff, these images right here, right? And so this is all I've been doing. So this stood out, right? Because, I mean, I'm in, I'm in a tux, right? And I'm in Las Vegas, and this kind of plays to it. And so what I'm doing is creating content. This is my new graph. You can't really see it. 
give you a zoom in like that. And all I'm trying to do is create content that just really stands out from everybody else's. That's all I'm trying to do at this point. And so I show you this. That's another thing I'm going to show you. And I show you this because I want you to see that it's more than just, how do I say, let me bring you back to me. It's more than just, you know, having a concept. What do you, the brand has to be there. People have, it has to draw the attention. That picture on me on, on the Las Vegas Strip, I can't tell you how many comments I've got on that picture because it just pops. It's different than some everybody else's, right? It's just something different. So again, if I have a concept and then I figure out what equipment I need to get my studio built, the third part is how do I create a brand or an image around it? The third or the fourth part is probably the toughest part that you're going to have to deal with, and that is this. This is where the rubber meets the road, and that is content, man. Because the content is the toughest part. And creating content, like one of the challenges I gave myself was, is to do this show three times a week. Three times a week. Now, try doing a 15, 20 minute show three times a week and create enough content, and it's different. Keep in mind that this is episode number 59. Let's just call it 60. And so you got to create new content. And what I realized is that what people are looking for, when you look at content, it's like you got to come up with something that, it, again, it's fresh. I'll just say this. this. This is my formula. It's fresh. It's insightful, right? And the last part, it's useful. This is the winning combination. This is the winning combination because too many people, too many trainers, experts, consultants talk about what you should do. You should do this. You should do this. You should do this. But the question is always, well, how do you do it? And it's not very tactical. It's very strategic and not very tactical. And so one of the toughest challenges I've found is trying to find for you guys, right? Because part of my job is to really bring content that you guys says, okay, that was worth watching or else you won't watch it. And so what I do is where can I find fresh content, which has forced me to read more and more. I listen to more blog, I read more blogs. I listen to a lot of podcasts and I watch a lot of bad webinars. And it's, really, it's nice when you find a good one. But then also I'm looking for content that's insightful, something that makes you go, ah, my definition of insight is information beyond the obvious, right? Information beyond the obvious. And so when I'm curating content for you guys, in my head, I'm always thinking, are they going to find it useful or are they going to say, yeah, I knew that already. So my goal is to always find it just very insightful. And then the last part is applicable, which is why we added uh, Tech Tuesday. I thought, by the way, are you guys digging Tech Tuesday? This is where we, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, every Tuesday we review a new piece of technology, especially in the AI space, some cool stuff in the AI space. So how do I find stuff that you guys can use? So if you're going to create something like this, keep in mind that that's the formula right there for the type of content you have to deliver. It's something that's fresh. It's insightful. People go, oh, I didn't know that. And then the last part, it's useful. In other words, wow, I didn't know I could use that. I, I see how I can implement this, you know, so forth and so on. So people are saying, uh, yeah, you guys got Tech Tuesday rock. I like Tech Tuesday. So I got a good, I got some really sweet for you this coming Tuesday. What I have this Tuesday, listen to me. Again, I'll say it. This one, uh, this one's going to blow your mind. This one's going to blow your mind. This is like, uh, I, I showed you one a while back. It was a piece of AI that told you what to say. Remember the one with sentiment analysis? And it was Cogito, C-O-G-I-T-O. So this one rivals Kojito, but it's a different application. And you can use it, especially on LinkedIn. And this AI tool is so brilliant. It is going to blow your mind. Tech Tuesday, don't miss it. How was that for a setup, man? That was a pretty good setup, I thought. All right. Number five, home stretch. This is the tough part. So I have the concept, right? Equipment, build the studio, right? Then let's figure out a brand, a name and a brand, right? Sales after dark, right? Type of thing. And then, again, pull the content together, right? And then, again, in my case, I said three times a week. I was actually going to do it five times a week, which I'm glad I didn't because it's hard, man. So three times a week. Uh, we got some nice content here, man. Let me see. Okay, you guys got a lot of questions here. Uh, how do you start a podcast? Let me bring up here. Uh, I don't want to miss anybody because then you, if I miss you, just type it in again, man. I don't mean uh, – oh, you guys are saying hi to each other. Got it, got it, got it. I like the fact that you guys know each other. A lot of you guys know each other. How do you start a podcast? Uh, uh, the short answer is it's kind of like this format. You know, you figure out what the content is. You figure out what equipment you're going to need. And then, you know, you really talk about, you know, who you're serving. What's your what's the name of your podcast? What, you know, what type of content you're trying to deliver? Then develop a good content around it and just start from there. So 
I use a program called, by the way, just if you want to know, Duncan, I use an application called Libsyn. Libsyn.com. Libsyn stands for Liberated Syndicate. And the reason that's important, Duncan, is that once you upload your stuff to Libsyn, it will then, it acts, it's like, I think it's like, uh, depending on how much you have, it's like, it's, I think it's how many downloads you have. It's like 15, or how many uploads, rather. It's like $15 a month, Duncan. And then it, what it does, it distributes it to, like, say, iTunes, uh, Pandora, Spotify, blah, blah, blah. And so there's a lot of different ones, but I like Lipson because you own the content. There's uh, something called Anchor FM. It's kind of, you know, it's questionable. They can use your content, you know, at their discretion. So be very careful. I like Liberated Syndicate. I would recommend that. So that's the formula. That's what I would use. Uh, if you guys use something different, man, pop it up there. Love to see it. Uh, Tech Tuesdays, yeah, please continue. Okay. I love it. Uh, uh, usable but unused information is a great way to think about content. Shout out. Man, way to go, man. Michael Moore, Eminem himself. Presenter or not, investing in the studio and putting out content going forward is paramount regardless of the industry. I think so. Even in thriving industries, you better separate yourself. I, I agree. Michael, I agree with you, man. I was just trying to be polite because some people go, I don't know if I should do that. I'm thinking, I think you need to, man. I think you need to, man. Uh, love the tools. That's cool. I only know Sunday and Tuesday. Which night is which night is night? Uh, so the other one is Thursday. You're missing. You're missing Thursday, Leon. So join us on Thursday. And one more here. Keep up the great content, Victor. Been a fan for years. Thank you, Daryl. Matt. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. And so the last part I think is the big one. This is what separates me from everybody else. How's that for cocky? It separates me from everybody else. Here's why. So remember. So let's go through it. Bye. We got the concept, okay, we got the concept, we got we got the equipment, right? We got the brand, you guys got that. And then again, we got the content that we create, that's the easy part. This is the big one, the big C, which is the commitment. That is something that those of you who've been with me from the beginning, you know what I said. I'm gonna go through the end of the year. So I started it May 4th, and mentally I said, I'm gonna commit all the way through the end of the year. And I haven't missed one yet. I've committed all the way through the end of the year. So I don't know what that number is going to be, but I'm going to be past 100. So my question is, are you willing to put in the time? Because I said at least 100 is going to be the number. Now, here's where some of the magic is starting to kick in. First of all, when you commit to that, it's almost like your brain doesn't let you question anything. I don't know if this makes any sense, but it's like once you say, no, we're going to the end of the year. Because when you don't put a stake in the ground out in the future somewhere, your brain has a way of talking you out of things. Ah, do we really need to do it on Tuesday? Ah, maybe you can skip this Sunday, right? It's Labor Day weekend. Why go on? Not a lot of people are going to be on. And in my brain, I'm like, no, we committed to three times a week. We continue to do it. And this is where a lot of people will fall short. They'll do all the other stuff. They'll do all this and probably get a lot of it right. But when it comes to this, they'll give up. Here's what's going to happen. If you try podcasts, and you know what I'm talking about if you've tried one. If you try putting your videos on YouTube, I, you know what I'm talking about, right? You put a couple of videos up, and guess what happens? You don't get a lot of views. You're like, oh, see, I knew this stuff doesn't work. You put your podcast out. You're like, oh, I knew this stuff doesn't work. How many downloads I'm getting? And I'm telling you right now that it's people like me. Not that we have the best content or the greatest content. I think I have good content, right? I, I'm humble about it. It's good content. But I'm the guy that's what? Just constantly just true, true, true. And that's what you need in this game. Because in this game, in this information era, for you to stand out, creating five, ten pieces of content does you no good. Stop wasting your time. If you're not going to commit to 100 pieces of content in a short period of time, just give it up. Be done with it. Just tap out, man. Just tap out. Because look at the amount of information people are creating, right? And we even have uh, AI machines. You know, Chris, Chris uh, we'll talk about this. About, maybe on Tech Tuesday, in another Tech Tuesday, show me a piece of software that actually creates content from an article. So content is going to start being created by machines. And I'm telling you right now that those people, you guys, the content creators that connect with people are the ones that are going to win. And in case you're thinking it's, it's just, uh, let's say, enterprise-level business, no. Uh, side note, you guys know that I like doing pens. See that pen right there? Right? I do pens, right? I, I turn pen. This morning I'm watching a video of a guy like turning a pen in a wood shop. 
And I looked at the number of subscribers. By the way, his video qualities were great. He had like three cameras in this wood shop, right? It's just little, he's like a backwood guy. You know, beard, hard, hard, big gut, the whole bit. And he's like, all right, now here's what you do. And he's, he's over there showing how to use the pen, the grinder, the bandsaw, and all that. And I was like, oh, this is a really good video. And I looked over it to see how many subscribers he had. He had almost 100,000 subscribers. 100,000 subscribers. And you should see this video. It's got, again, he's using like two or three cameras. But it's not high production, but it's the content. Because that's why, I mean, I'm just watching this video. I'm enthralled by the video because I'm into it. And I looked at this guy, and it's 100,000. 100,000 views. And he's got a couple of sponsorships on there already. So, again, in any business you're in, if the guy in a wood shop can talk about making pens and have 100,000 subscribers, why can't you? Right? It's not easy. And he had a lot of videos. I didn't count the videos he had, but he had a lot of videos. So anyway, just throw that out there because some people think, well, it won't work for my industry. Really? It'll work for any industry. Trust me. The majority of the time when we're looking to fix something, repair something, or learn something, where do we go? YouTube. We don't even want to read anymore. We go to YouTube. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Let me see. We got, uh, got that, got that, got that. And then I wonder how to keep the content interesting. I sell test equipment to engineers. There's so many ways you can keep the, uh, that interesting because there's so many. Look, Duncan, subscribe to all the equipment manufacturer magazines, right? Whether it's, I don't know, do they still have like Tectronic, Century Machines, all these different you know companies that are out there and just look at the equipment and become that guy that knows the equipment. How does sales after dark bring revenue to your business? I was getting to that, Ramon. I'm getting to that. You're so, you're so impatient, Ramon. You're so impatient, but it's a good question, by the way. I definitely feel this. I go live at least three days a week because of an initial commitment. Uh, I've been doing so since March of this year. What up, brother? There you go, Matt. It is, Matt. It's, I, think, I think it's just a matter of doing it. Chris Stone, your competition will thank you when you decide to fade away. Thanks, Victor, for bringing it, man. Yeah, that's it. True that. Uh, you are not wrong at all. I got you, Ramon. Okay, so Ramon, you want to know about money. I got you. Because it's a good question, because when everything went away, when all the revenue went away, like literally 80, 90 percent, I'm not even exaggerating. I wish I could. It was it's almost like, do you cry or do you just maybe just kind of whimper a little bit and just say, OK, let's pivot now. And that's exactly what I had to do. Uh, and so what happens, let me break down the bonuses by bonuses. I'm going to talk about what I've gotten out of this whole process, because there's some tangibles money and there's some intangibles. Right. And so the first one I would say is. I talked about when I create something, again, it's look at the creation piece. When I create content, because I've had to do this, because I had to go in and create content, I, I started noticing something. And so this, this falls under the intangible piece, right? So when I started creating content, I, I noticed something that one, you know, when you, when you look at content, it's like you have to absorb it. I just, I just called it the ABC model. That's what I came up with. I had to absorb new content, right? So in other words, so if I'm studying something on AI or something, right, I have to learn with the AI or equipment, whatever it may be. And I realize I have to absorb it. But then I also realize that the way people explain things, and you tell me again if I'm wrong, is like so dry sometimes or so convoluted. Like you ever read something and then you keep reading it and then you're like, I didn't get that. You know what I mean? You just didn't understand it. And then again, or you read an article and you go through the whole article, there was no real content in there. But what I learned is that my, my gift, my personal gift, is that I can absorb information, but I think the magic happens for me when I break it down. If I break it down, you know, I mean, I break it down into like, like what I call like pieces that I can say, this is how I would use it. And when I break it down, then my job then is to create the new content, right? Then I create new content, right? So I take this, and so this has been a gift. And like I said, this is a personal gift because what's, what's happening is that I'm learning how to absorb information. Like I could read a study. Like uh, Thursday, oh, I got to tell you about Thursday. Before I forget about Thursday, by the way. So there's three books on virtual selling. Three books on virtual selling. So I've gone through all three books. I've gone through all three books. So there's, um, there's obviously the, the Rain Group. There's Jeb Blunt. And I forgot, Mark, something is the third book. So I've gone through the three books. And it's interesting, as I'm going through the books, I find myself being able to absorb and deconstruct faster, break it down faster. And then, so what I'm going to do on Thursday is I'm going to do a side-by-side comparison, like a face-off, virtual selling, three books that came out within the same month. I'm going to do like a, 
Can I call it a book face off? Something like that. So it'll be interesting. So this process, I've gotten better at breaking down content and being able to what create and deliver that new content. The other thing is, and I got it written right here, is in front of you guys, this right here, me speaking to you. If you go back to my first one, second, third one, maybe even the fifth one, uh, let me get these comments. Let me get these comments here before I go to the, the evolve piece. Uh, I don't want to miss it. Uh, Ramon says, I, I'm a, I got that one. Uh, hey, Vic, which service do you use for Kajabi for your learning platform and how much uh, have you had to pay? Uh, so I got the annual license for Kajabi.com. That's where the Sales Velocity Academy is at. Uh, I don't know what I paid because uh, my daughter was running the marketing side right there and she actually built the platform for me. Uh, so she would know what the price is, but I think it's like fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars a year, something like that. Uh, I'm not sure of the price, but Elka, it's a good system, man. I'm really happy with it. Uh, you're freaking awesome, man. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, and I'm going to answer your question about money in a bit. Uh, content always comes from conversation. I spend a lot of time recalling the com the conversations I've had, and that's why I get my content. I agree, man. You get some great content. I mean, look, I just went to the uh, to an st electronic store the other. Uh, two, three days ago. And trust me, I got a couple of nuggets out of that because it's not so much that salespeople do wrong things wrong. Is that when somebody does something to you, you go, why did you do that? You just lost the sale. It's always amazing. That's where I pull a lot of my content from. But anyway, what's happened, and this is the, by the way, so let me, let me frame this. If you do something like this, the first thing that you'll get out of it is that you'll learn how to absorb content and create, you'll come through you. By come through you means you don't copy content, you absorb it, you begin to understand it, move pieces around like a beautiful mind, right? Move the pieces around, and then you're able to create content your way. And then you feel yourself growing like up here. You feel that you begin to understand, you know, different aspects. When I, ha when I force myself to study AI, that's one thing. When I have to look at a sales process that this company offers versus this company, the Rain Group says, here's how we do virtual selling. Jeb Blunt says, here's how we do it. Third guy says we do it this way. Then I look at all this and you start finding common points. What begins to happen when you're doing this is that you begin to, I guess, think at a higher level. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit, and so that's the mental benefit. Then there's the physical benefit, if I could put it that way. And that is I've noticed, and this is not a like an attaboy for me. It's not. It's just, just sharing that my technique in presenting to you has evolved. My equipment has evolved, but my, also my presentation technique, my styles, my interactions with you, I've noticed it's totally changed to what it used to be back in May. So that's the other benefit because every time I mess with Doug Lehman all the time about this, I said, you know, every time I do one of these, I'm just getting my reps in. Just like when you're doing a weightlifting, you're getting your reps in or you're going into the batting cage, you're getting your, you know, your hits in. It's the same thing. Every time you do one of these, and I know Jared knows what I'm talking about because he does a lot of video, probably does more than me. And every time you do it, you get better. And your ability to talk to an inanimate object, a camera, you get better. And there's no other way to teach this. You can't teach this. You have to go through the process of doing it. And so when you do 100 of these, I'll let you know when I get to 100. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side compare. Here's number one. Here's number 100. Let's see the difference. And I think you're going to see a very big difference. So that's the second one. Mentally, you grow because you're consuming more content so you can deliver. And that ability to consume, absorb, deliver, that's a skill set, man. That's a powerful skill set. Number two, the ability to deliver. Change your style, interact, work with this virtual medium, with all this software. Again, I'm in a studio by myself talking to you guys in La La Land out there. You become better at this. You learn how to use these things when they do work, whatever. You know what I mean? You learn how to play with the equipment. So the third part is, this is the business part, what's been happening? So in the background, what you don't see, what you don't see is, and I'll go through the, I'll go through the numbers, and I wrote some here. So from a business side, what you see happening is all of a sudden my sales velocity academy has gone up. So sales have gone up, right? Which I'm really happy with. Sales have gone up. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm close to signing, a, you know, a, a licensing deal, which I think is going to be fantastic. It wouldn't have happened, but they found me. How? Yeah, what are these, right? So that's the big thing. The second is that I'm getting a lot of podcast invites. Like, I get a lot of invites to be on podcasts. 
Victor, we saw your stuff. Victor, I saw you here. Victor, I saw you there. Victor, I saw you there. I had a kid, and he is a kid. He contacted me. He said, I'm 17 years old. I'm from Nigeria. His name was Dave. I forgot his last name. I'm from Nigeria. He, and he was so cool about it. And his email to me, like it was just the most sincere, honest email. He says, I don't have a lot of followers, uh, a lot of downloads per month. I have maybe a thousand downloads. Would you please consider being on my show? And I mean, come on, when a kid that young asks you for a favor, you can't say no, right? So I get all these wonderful international invites, right? And so I'm also getting invites to not only podcast, but I'm also getting asked to be on these summits. So that's another thing. So I get invitations to be on summits, right? These are summits. Now, these are free. I'm not getting anything for these things. I'm not getting anything. Just pure exposure. But keep in mind that some of these people have lists. And when they put me on their podcast, they're sending out the podcast to their list. Like the one I did with Dan Jordan, which, again, I really promote when it's time because there was some great content on that show. Chris, excellent job producing it. And so, so this is happening in the background. Now. What's been happening in the background is I've been getting booked for a lot of virtual webinars, right? So I'm getting booked for a lot of webinars like we're doing well. We're doing well on the webinar side. So that's one revenue stream. And this is good because, again, until we can go live face-to-face, -face, can't do it. Coaching has gone up. So my coaching program, that's gone up. So that's more money, right? And so I got a sponsorship. We're probably getting to the second one. We got Pipe Drive, right? We're working out the deal for the last quarter. So that's more money, right? I got people who want to license the Sales Velocity Academy, sell it for me, right? And we split 50 50 on the revenue. That has become a new revenue stream. And I've had at least three international companies contact me that they want to work out a licensing deal for the Sales Velocity Academy, and they love this content. By the way, if you buy this Vibe board, right, you see the link down there in your description? If you buy the Vibe board, you think I get a commission off that? The affiliate programs, yeah, I make money off of that too. And so what's happening is that the revenues just keep building. And so I think, again, let's go back to March 20th, when I kind of knew, oh, this is not good. I think by March 20th of 2021, I'll be, if not close, at the same level where I was speaking full time without having to leave my studio. That is the result of what is happening right now. And by the way, I just got to be honest. Did I, know what I, did I know what I was doing? No. But I knew that we're going virtual because people ask me this. What was your roadmap? I had no roadmap. My roadmap was I know I had to go virtual. I know I had to do something different. I know I had to create something different. I know I had to try to be better, like up the game here, you know, to be at a certain level if I just want to compete and stand out, signal to noise ratio, right? And But I, I, I knew that that was the general direction I wanted to go in. What was going to happen, I still, I didn't know. But all of a sudden, it's attracting people to me, right? And people are hiring me to do webinars, come in and, you know, do a 45-minute keynote virtually. I don't have to travel. All these things have been happening. And it's all because of what? Just doing this. And it's hard, man. It's hard because it, it's, it's, this is mentally fatiguing when you have to do this three times a week to try to come up with some good content, some, some, something you guys can use and really take away. And I'm not just yapping away and talking, right? And so it's been really hard. So my, as I close this out, I'll say to you, and I'll take some of the comments, is that, you know, unless you shift this up here. So, you know, Sam Silverstein has got a program called Pivot, and I'll talk about that down the road also. Um, and it's, it's a good program because it talks about accountability, but unless you pivot your mindset, and I know this is going to sound like such a cliche, but unless you pivot your mindset to it's changed, that old reality is no longer reality. Let, let me tie it to something personal you know. Did you ever meet somebody, unless you knew somebody in high school, you knew somebody in college, whatever maybe, you haven't seen it for 10 to 15, 20 years, right? And then in your mind, you have this image of who they were. And then... You see them, you run into them somehow, and you talk to them, and they aren't who they are anymore, right? And I think that's what this pandemic is all about, is that some people have that persistent image of what used to be, right? They still have that image in their head that this is the way it was. Well, that's the exactly it. That's how it was. It's not going to be that way. 
And so I think people are going to be waiting for this reality that's normal to come back. It ain't coming back. And so unless you can pivot your mindset, you've got to begin there. Pivot the mindset. So this is going to change. What do I have to do differently now? What skills do I have to learn? What's the tool sets I need? It's the skill sets, whatever, the mindset, right? Then, because if you pivot your mindset, then you can pivot your business. You pivot your business, you pivot your results. That's my opinion. Just thought I'd share. But that's what's been happening in the background. All this cool stuff. I'm, and, uh, you know, the part that's not on here, that's not on here is, is what I always call the, the, my quality of life. My quality of life is just through the roof. By that, I mean, I mean, I'm not traveling. I'm enjoying life more. I can, you know, get up in the morning, go get a cup of coffee, just chill, man. Just, I mean, mentally, man, I am in a good place, man. I'm in the zone because of how I'm managing this whole thing. And I'm sharing this with you, not to brag, you know, about what's happening to me. It's really to share with you that this shift, even though it was difficult, it's one of those things that, man, where I'm at now, I'm so happy I went through that. Because if the pandemic had not happened, I would never have made the shift. But what's cool about it is that the rest of the world is making the shift also. And so if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you'll eventually get it, man. So anyway, I'll take some comments, man. I'll get off my uh, my soapbox and we'll wrap this thing up, man. Uh, let me see. We got. I missed a lot, I know. Uh, let me see. Content. Also, I got Jared there. Okay, right here. Let me see. I think Spencer right here. Natural comes from time, practice, confidence, be yourself. That's why your video is always great. Thank you, Spencer. Appreciate that, man. It is. It does take time, man. Practice. Victor, how advanced do you prepare your content, as you mentioned? Uh, what two next two episodes are you going to be? I don't really – I'm not going to lie to you. The I had three ideas for this episode, for today, right? I was going to do the, uh, the virtual selling comparison, the three books, right? Uh, I was going to do one on price – and subjectivity. And then uh, I got into uh, what happened was, truth be told, Chris Long sent me a clip of the interview I did with Deej, uh, uh, Dan Jordan. And I was like, you know what? Let me talk about this one minute clip here that he sent me, which is talking about what the pandemic has done to pivot. I said, you know, that's a better topic for tonight. And then so I spent the last two hours before I got on with you, just outlining everything. So what I do is uh, just you, if you want to see my notes, here are my notes, man. And so what I do is, you guys got, you know, and I'll take this off so you can see it. So I go through a bunch. Of, I do all these notes all the time. So it's like I just do all my notes here, right? And so, but this, what you see, this is like the fourth one. So I start out with one big piece of paper, second big piece of paper, third big piece of paper, and then you let, I tie it down to this, and then these are my notes. So it typically takes two hours just to prepare for this show. So that's typically what I commit to, uh, depending on the topic, like the one I did on Cogito, which is the actual software, that AI software, that took longer because I had to learn some of the software, you know, download the video, edit the video, do all kinds of crazy things. So, uh, but two to three hours is a reasonable commitment. That's a reasonable commitment. Uh, thank you, Pete. As always, man, thank you for being a great supporter of that, man. Jared, top of mind with your customers, awareness. Jared, let them know how many videos you do a week, man. It's, it's, it, that guy's amazing. He's a machine. I'm not even that good. Uh, great information. Keep it moving forward. Thank you, CF. Jared says, your content leads the prospect along the journey to becoming your customer every single time. Lay down the breadcrumbs. Uh, and we talked about that because we talked about preference formation, right? When people see you online, and we've talked about this in the past, the reason I have such a high close rate when somebody contacts me, it's not because I'm good. I'm okay. But what happens is they've seen my content. They've, you know, they've got the information off my website. You go to my website right now, you'll see my pricing. I put my pricing. Most people, by the way, most speakers don't like putting their pricing on the website. I don't like making people call me. That's just my philosophy. People tell me I'm wrong. Eh, I live my life my way. But by the time they call me, I know they've seen my videos and they've seen my pricing. So that means the only reason they're calling me is to confirm, right, that I am the guy who I pretend to be online. So I usually get a lot of questions, a lot of conversations, but I usually close the majority of my deals because of that. So that is preference formation, man, right there. Uh, Ramon Betanza, that's awesome, man. Will you stay virtual after this ends, or will you go back to speaking? You're an awesome speaker, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, Ramon. You know, I was talking to my wife about that. We are just going back and forth that I personally, uh, if I could, I think I'm going to jack up my fees. I got to be honest here. I think I'm going to raise my fees real high. So if you really want me bad enough, you'll pay the new price. But other than that, I would rather stay virtual. But if I can speak like maybe one time publicly, like maybe one time a month, 
I would be happy with that. That would be a good number. Maybe once every two months. Every, yeah, yeah, once every two months would be better, yeah. So, but, you know, again, if I'm a capitalist. Throw enough money at me. I'll go. I'll fly anywhere, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, CF, what you got? Victor, what you broke down are variations of partnering. When will you go deeper into growing sales with partnerships? Be more specific, CF. Let me know what you want because I can... I can go as deep down the rabbit hole as you want in terms of uh, contracts and everything and what I've set up with people. Uh, awesome content. Thank you, Juka, man. And thank you for staying up, man. So, so late or getting up so early. Thanks for sharing your transition. Very inspiring. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate that. Uh, as you said earlier, earlier, it's mental fatigue. It's mentally fatiguing when it happens. How do you keep yourself going? Sometimes we just have a bad day. I have, you know, I have days where I just don't feel like doing anything. You know, I have to, you know what I mean? I, I really do. And so it's not like, I, it's not, people think I get up every morning and go, yeah, let's go face the world. Let's go read some new content. No, that's not me. Uh, I get up, uh, like I said, I like to spend my hour, hour and a half early in the morning before anybody gets up uh, and just like read. And for some reason, you know how your brain, you know, Inko always tells you, ah, don't read, not today. You don't have to read today or don't listen to this podcast or don't watch. And I've learned not to trust my brain, if that makes any sense. So what I try to do is just grab a cup of coffee. I make a pot of coffee, get the coffee, put it down, and I just start reading something, right? And for some reason, when I read, it always breaks me out of the funk because you can't hold two thoughts at the same time. And so what happens is if you got this negative thought here, as soon as you start reading something, it just crowds that one out. You know what I mean? And a new thought comes in. You can't hold a negative and a positive at the same time. It's impossible. So therefore, force yourself to read something or watch something inspirational. And watch how that changes. Uh, also, tremendous content info. Thank you, Kenry. Um, let me know if that was too uh, too much. Because, you know, as I was putting this together, I go, do they really want to hear this? Or is just me just talking? But I, but I, but one of the things I want to do with the show, you know, as part of the, the process of discovering what I want to do with the show, is I, I want to have, like, 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 honest dialogue and not give you a bunch of hype, right? Because it's easy, you know, I don't, I don't want to be that guy or that gal that just, you know, yeah, man, you could do it. You can make a million dollars da, 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 in one week. Something. I don't want to do that. I want to have like honest conversations. So just like we're all tired of fake news, you know, I, I don't want to be that fake guy that over exaggerates what's really happening. Or if I tell you something, I'm not telling you all of it. You know how some people tell you like, yeah, we grew our sales by a thousand percent. But they never tell you that they only sold like a hundred bucks last week. So it was not, it wasn't that hard to get to a thousand percent, you know, increased revenue. So I try not to do that. So anyway, trying to, trying to keep it real, man, trying to keep it real. Okay. I love your paradigm explanation. People don't keep up with your evolution, getting them up to date. It's a waste of time. How do you recommend bringing on and developing your new, uh, your new market? So how you have paradigm? People don't keep up with your evolution. Getting them up to date is a waste of time. How do you recommend bringing on and developing your new market? I think what you're asking me is that I don't try to, like, update my my you know ministries. Can I say parishioners? Uh, but I, you know my my tribe. I don't try to update them. I try to understand what it is they want. Like the folks, you guys, when you join me, I try to kind of say, is this it? Would this be interesting to them? That's the, that's the only question I really ask myself all the time. It's like, will this be of interest to them? Will I like it? I should combine that too, by the way, because I have to like it, right? Will I like it? That's one. But again, if you know me and you heard me speak, it's not about whether I like it. It's whether it will serve you. Because I know that as long as I keep serving you, that you'll keep coming back. And I like that. So if I like the content and it serves people, it just seems to attract. And so the part I didn't talk about over ministries is that, these podcasts, these live streams, plus my YouTube and stuff, it's just attracting people. Now, would I like more traffic? We all would like more traffic. But remember, we're fighting a lot of content out there now. And so I think part of it is being patient. That's why I committed to the end of the year, because I know if I didn't do that, I would probably want to give up. Because, you know, when you don't get the views you want, when you don't get the likes and the shares, you're like, oh, this was a great show. Why didn't I get it? It kind of psychs you up. So I go back to the circle of influence that I always mention on this show is that is there are things you can't control. So focus on things you can control. I can't control how many people watch it. I can't control whether people like it, but I can control how much I enjoy it and how much I enjoy putting the content together to deliver you. And I just focus on that. I don't know if that's a good answer, but that's an honest answer. I try to focus on that. That's where I look at the value. Man. Uh, daily vids. See, 
daily vids. This guy does daily vids, and I've seen him. I've honestly missed a few days. Like, yeah, yeah, he missed like two, three days. He's going to complain. Uh, the last few weeks because I was working on a big project, but daily vids. So, Jared, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're on it, man. I, I keep seeing your stuff, and I'm like, how much content does this guy put out? Victor, how are you doing? What can you tell us about sales B2C by email? Close rates are down. You know, we all know that, you know, the uh, the open rates are really low and the click-through rates on those emails are really, really low. Uh, and so I think you have to find, it's hard, man. It's, you know, it's, it's just really hard because, you know, I always tell people, if you want to understand consumers, be the consumer and realize that you do what probably people are doing to you is that you, the first thing you do, you, you open up your computer, you look at your emails, right? And then what do you do? You start deleting things, right? You start delete, 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 delete. And you know, you can smell spam. You can smell marketing, you know. Uh, and so the question is, how do you uh, get better email? One of the things they're finding is that video does have a higher engagement rate, like short, like one minute videos. So that might be something you want to look into. I, I would just, you know, Google some, you know, some uh, you know, email, email open rates with video. And I've talked about a product like Loom.com, L-O-O-M.com, great product, bunch of them out there. That's just one I like. But maybe incorporating video into some of your emails might be it. But keep in mind, though, man, we got to provide content, not just pitch people all the time. Victor, can we speak about how to have an effective sales meeting with your salespeople on one of your episodes? Like one of the salespeople? Yeah, we can do that. I think that's a good one. The Because I think on that one, yeah. Just one-on-one -on -one meetings. Yeah, we can do that. It's a good one. I like that one, Ramon. That's a good one. I got a couple that several of you have asked for. It's in, it's in the pipeline. It's in the pipeline. But that's a good one. I mean, I, I think the short of it would be is that, because I've had to do this so many times, I've had to set expectations. But keep in mind, Ramon, that a lot of people who aren't, who are struggling, like salespeople, is that 57% of salespeople don't hit the, don't achieve or exceed quota. I think the number is 57 uh, CSO insights, something like that. It's at least half. And so these people who are not hitting their quotas is sometimes they just don't know how to do it. So you almost have to, it's like a choreographer. You have to show them the steps and a lot of people don't know the steps. They don't know what to do. So you almost have to mimic it for them and then lay down a plan for them. And so we can get into it. But, uh, and I may have covered this in one of the past, but probably one of the earlier live streams, but we can go back and hit that again. So good topic. Creating niche is the key. But as a, as you are working on SIP, right, SAF, webinars, how do you ensure the audience are different? How do you think that ensure that things are different for audiences? Great question, to read. So in other words, how do I keep this? So for example, we talked about this, right? So this is what we talked about. Today we talked about the five steps, the pandemic pivot, I call it, right? Five steps to pivot in pandemic. This is something I wouldn't put in the Sales Influence podcast. The Sales Influence podcast is more about, you know, sales strategy, finding the why and how people buy, right? So I would look at that. So this would not be in there. Now, let's just say that I did talk about something. Let's say we take Ramon's example, right? And we talked on this live stream, we talked about, you know, how do you have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with your salespeople, right? So I would do a sales after dark, right? Like this, I would do a sales after dark and I would probably use like images, right? I'd probably like draw things out da, 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 and just explain it to you and probably go into more detail because I'm not rushed. My sales influence podcasts are no more than 10 minutes. They're typically between five and seven minutes. That's kind of what the goal I'm shooting for. What I would do is take that sales after dark and then I go over to my podcast station, which is set up over here, right? And then I would just record like highlights of it, but I wouldn't go into the full detail. And then maybe I would say, hey, go to my YouTube channel or check out my sales after dark, you know, live stream for more details. That's how I do it. So the, the sales influence podcasts are short five to seven minute snippets. This is more like a full conversation. So when I, when I thought about the sales after dark, it was a great, it's a great question you asked. I thought about a more inclusive conversation with comments and questions and things of that nature. So it's like a different feel. But you can borrow. Like I can do something here and then borrow a little bit and put it on the Sales Influence podcast. Remember, everybody has their own channel for listening to me or watching me. Some people watch me on the live stream but never visit my YouTube channel and watch my regular videos. Then some people, I've, I've asked this question, hey, have you seen my live streams? You've seen my videos, but have you seen my live stream? They go, what live stream? Right. Or I'll say, how about my podcast? What podcast? So 
omni-channel, omnipresence, omni-channel. You know, so hit them all, man. And even, even if you're repeating yourself, which I try not to do, uh, it doesn't hurt you. So again, just borrow a little bit. So I don't know if I answered your question, but let me know. Uh, I'm studying sales, only listening uh, to you, man. No, listen to everybody, man. There's a lot of great trainers out there. I think the, I think the trick is to find somebody you like. So I'm glad you like me. Thank you very much. But also listen to what other people have to say because everybody's looking at it from a different perspective. And I think at, at the end of the day, I want you to have that 360 and then make it yours, man. Okay? Make it yours. Uh, happy Labor Day, Victor. Another great show. We appreciate you. Thank you, man, Pete. Really appreciate you being here. Great content. Hardest thing is for us to figure out is how to use and apply info in our unique situation business. Is this where mentors and coaches come into play? I think so. I think this is where I would use coaches, right? Uh, so if you don't have a coach, you have a mentor, you know, maybe get one. Uh, I think, you know, like I said, I do coaching and we get into deep discussions. You know, I, trust me, uh, I have one tomorrow. It's a company from New Zealand, right? And we get into, you know, strategies are so deep that it's really this way and that way going wide. And so I think if, if you're having a hard time applying it, get a coach. And again, just do it for a time limit. I always tell people, if you're going to get a coach and you're not sure if you want to work with a coach for a long time, don't commit to like a year or something. Just do like a month, two months, and just, you know, quit when you want to quit. I think that's the best way. But try it out because every time you're doing, if you're not doing something, you're losing money, right? Rod, where have you been, man? What's your best tip at getting attention in virtual environments? Let's say targeting CEOs. I got a number for you, Rod. This one this I got from the Rain Group, virtual selling Rain Group. And I think I'm going to go off the top of my head here. Did you know, and I, if you were in my last two, I guess, two uh, live streams ago, I brought this up, uh, that 72% of C-level executives, buyers, look up people on LinkedIn when they're contacted. So if you left a message for a CEO, 72% of these people will actually look you up on LinkedIn. Step number one, have your LinkedIn game down. So that's a good point. So I thought that was really interesting. I never heard that before. So I thought that was interesting. So uh, remember, you got you to follow. If you just try to jump in and start talking to the CEO, it's not going to work. I think there's got to be this courting process, almost like the foreplay piece, which is, you know, you follow them, you like them. And there's so many tools out there, so many AI tools that you can use to track people when they post something, read what they post, what they liked, what they shared, and you begin to know people. You start bringing them in close. It's a patience game, man. But if you like, just want to jump in, hey, I'd like to talk to you, it's not going to work. So that's what I would say. All right, I'm going to start wrapping up. Does anyone have any video editing software recommendation that is easy to use? Uh, I started out with iMovie, uh, and now I use Final Cut Pro, which is a little more sophisticated, but it's like still a great piece of software once you learn how to use it. Uh, anybody else, you can chime in and let them know. Uh, this might be a naive question. I hate when people start out like that. This might be a naive question, which you know it's not going to be, right? But how can I find out what content should I produce if I don't have any specific interest? How do I systematically approach this question? Okay, that's a fair question, Sam. So you don't have to have, so I don't know what business you're in, Sam, but I, I would turn it this way. I said, you know, there's something of value. Even if you have the most basic knowledge right now, there's probably something you enjoy, right? Now, this, I'm assuming that you're retired or not, because if you're working for a company, my, if I'm working for a company, this is what I would do differently. If I was working for a company, I would up my LinkedIn game. I would, I would consider myself my own marketing billboard, right? Even though I'm just a sales guy, I would be like a marketing billboard. And I would explain my product, talk about my product, talk about the industry, talk about everything, anything that has involved with the industry. And I would really bang away at that on LinkedIn to position myself as an expert. I would create content around that as well. So I think that's what's really changed is that salespeople need to see themselves as marketers as well and not leave it up to the company marketing to do it by themselves. Remember, people are going to look you up on LinkedIn. And the content that's there, the presence that you have there, make a difference. So keep that in mind. I don't know if I answered it, but... That's as close as I can get to that one. Uh, hello, Victor. This week, I tried to uh, buy a book, Rethinking the Way You Sell at Amazon. Cool. Is it good? Let me know. Let me know. I uh, appreciate it. I like to grow my sales by partnering with others who serve targeted audience. How do you go about reaching out to start a conversation? How does one catch our attention to a partner? How do you make, help them make money? That's the big one. And the thing is, you know, here's the worst way to approach somebody with a partner. Hey, by the way, I uh, found you on LinkedIn. Uh, we don't compete. We serve similar markets. 
Would you like to get together for some coffee? And so we can discuss how we might be able to partner together. It's the worst thing to do. I get so many of those, it's irritating. Because what you're basically saying is, hey, I had an idea. I want you to stop what you're doing. So maybe we can figure out something. Why don't you try this, CF? I'm not saying you, but I'm just saying if it was you. Why don't you try this? Why don't you approach a guy like Victor and Justin? Victor, I know your business model. I know how much you charge for the sales velocity academy. I know how much your licensing is. Here's the deal. I work with these type of companies. I, I'm willing to say that I can do this, 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 and this, and bring in this type of revenue based on what I've done, whatever it may be, something very specific and tangible. And says, is that worth a conversation to you? And I'm just letting you know, I'd be like, hell yes, it is. But the thing is, you have to bring something to the table, not just an idea. And I think that's the problem. Too many people see if just bring an idea or they just want to have a conversation. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we come up with. Let's brainstorm. Let's get together. Let's collaborate. They use all these words. They're not saying anything. But the people that catch my attention is, uh, for example, a gentleman by the name of, uh, I'll just say his name is, uh, I just won't say his name, HM. HM came to me and said, Victor, I got a question for you. I want to sell your programs. Da, 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 da. I just need to know what's the commission split. That's all, I can, that's all he said to me. That, that was his opening line. He says, I want to resell your program. I want to sell in volume. I want to know what the commission split is, to which I said 50-50 because that's always fair. He says, that's all I need. Took off, didn't hear from him again. I don't know, three, four months later, he walks in with a deal, so to speak. He says, email, here's the deal. And it was, it was a nice little five-figure deal he put together for us. And I was like, he says, basically he says, he says, I've got the deal, create the logins, I'll send you your part of the check. And he actually sent me 50% of the commission after he charged the customer. That to me was like, you know, stop talking and go do. So if you can find something like that, CF, I think the more you can make it tangible, I think the better. So check that out. Uh, Victor, as a, as a salesperson, what are your thoughts about cold calling? Do it. Get on the phone. Uh, I don't know why people think cold calling is dead. It ain't dead, man. It, keep, keep in mind that we're an omni-channel society, whether it's, whether it's texting, whether it's cold calling, you know, so forth and so on. You, there's so many ways to hit a customer. We can argue about which one's more effective, which one's more likely to get. But I'm telling you right now, uh, cold calling has been proclaimed dead for many years over and over again, and the thing keeps... It just won't die, man. It just won't die. So, Kohai, my man from Japan. Hey, little Victor. I tried to read that uh, book you mentioned, Rethinking the Way You Sell, but Kindle version didn't fit my Kindle. I can't read that. Which one was this one, Kohai? Send me an email on the side uh, from my website. Go to my website, send me an email and to know what book. Uh, you're very welcome for the advice. Uh, entrepreneurs are made or born. I think they're, I'm going to say they're made, man. I'm going to say they're made. But by the way, you know, they did a study that talked about salespeople. It said 13% of salespeople are natural born salespeople. The others are actually made. And the reason I, I'm, I'm saying this, Ramon, because uh, my family's from Puerto Rico, de Puerto Rico. And so my father had a third grade education. My mother had a fifth grade education. Uh, there was no entrepreneurship in that family. So uh, I like to think that I'm proof that it is made. So got to catch the replay. Hey, Sparrow's Tale, always glad to have you, even if it's on the replay. Uh, Power Director is a great video software. Oh, great. I like it when you guys share. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Can you make an episode of How to Sell Yourself on a Romantic Day? Uh, no. <laughs> My wife will not allow me to do that. Great feedback on coaches uh, and upping your LinkedIn game. Got it. Uh, Rod, man, I appreciate you too, man. Any tips for attention grabbing content type hashtags or frequency of posting on LinkedIn? I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn is like an enigma to me. i got to be honest. It's like a black box. Uh, I see some some of the stupidest videos get like I don't know like thousands of views, and then I see a real sophisticated article get 20 views or something like that, and I'm like I don't get it. And so something in the algorithm, brother, something in the algorithm. Very deep and inspiring content, Elkin. Thank you very much. Super fantastic, Victor. I'm telling you, CF, put the proposal together. Anyway, final thoughts before I get out of here. As always, uh, by the way, make sure you subscribe, like or share, do those things. Uh, keep in mind that. The virtual piece is not going away. So ask yourself, what can I begin to do today? Don't wait for you to need it. You know what I mean? Play with Zoom. I remember when I first started using Zoom back in, because I, I kind of use Zoom, but I never really use Zoom. So, you know, March comes around, the pandemic. So now we're into April and I had to start learning how to use Zoom. And it was like, I felt so clumsy when I was using it. So all these tools, I mean, again, what people don't see is all the struggles I go through, all the 
the cussing that I do, the swearing, and just, ah, I can't take this anymore. This is not working. That's not working. And we all go through that process. Nobody ever just plugs and plays and goes. Nobody does that. If they say that, they're lying. And so figure it out. You can figure it out. Think of it just as a new skill set that you have to earn and learn. And I think if you were to invest, I'm talking minimal amount of money. I'm not saying you have to do this, but a minimal amount of money in your camera, in your microphone, in your look, right? I'm telling you, you will feel the difference in those virtual conversations. You just have to believe me. So again, do the video piece, obviously. And if you're going to do something on your own, you're going to be your own marketing person. Figure out what type of content you like to produce. But pick something that you enjoy. I like sales. I, people ask me, do you really love sales? No, I like what sales does. I like the fact that it's, it's a profit center. It's a money generator. It keeps businesses going. That's what excites me about sales. It's what it does for businesses. So find something that kind of just jacks you up. Create a brand. Come up with something different. Have frequency. You know, Have content going out. And I know that some of you are thinking, I don't know if I can do three times a week. I don't care. Then do one time a week. And if you can't do one time a week, do two minutes a week. You know, start, start low and then just move the barrier up. And what happens is as you get your reps in, as you get comfortable, all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself that you want to do more content, and it's effortless. It's all workflow. I always recommend the book Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits is all about how do you create habits that minimize the friction of your workflow. So kind of consider that. And at the end, if you can do all this right, watch what's going to happen. You're going to attract business to you or your company, right? But again, if you work for yourself, you're going to love it. If you're a small, medium-sized business, you're really going to love it if you just produce the right content. Even if you're a large enterprise organization and you're a salesperson working within those organizations, remember, at the end of the day, you still have to market yourself because customers will look at your profile to figure out who you are, how much you know, and they'll try to figure out, is this person credible? So why not invest in your virtual personality? So on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. You guys are awesome. If I missed your question, I'm super sorry. I know I missed a couple here. But as always, man, thank you for joining me. This is Victor Antonio, Sales After Dark, Money Never Sleeps, and Selling Ain't Hard When You Know How. Take care.